So this is Google Classroom, and the training is coming to you from Dell Technologies and ALP. I'm an independent consultant with ALP, all right? Um, we're going to be using the chat box a lot, so keep that open and handy. Um, and just a little bit about me. My name is Eileen Fernandez Parker. I'm originally from Philadelphia. So if you hear, not if, but when you hear my um, Philadelphia accent, um, just forgive me. <laughs> um, I'm uh, 32 years in education, public school education. I've taught elementary, middle and high. Most of my time was spent at the middle school. My specialty was English and I also taught computer applications. Um, I spent the last 10 years as a tech specialist and an instructional technology coach, helping teachers integrate technology. So it was not just the how do I use it, but it was the why do I use it and the when do I use it, right? Um, I have my master's in ed tech and I'm also a Google certified trainer. Um, I am starting to develop and give out freebies. So um, if you're interested in getting any freebies, um, I do have a YouTube channel. My, I have a company. And this is my cute little logo over here, the blue apple. Um, and uh, so I have a YouTube channel. So you can just go to YouTube and search for Cultivating the Learning. I also have a blog at my Cultivating the Learning, I forgot the .com um, website. Uh, you can find me on Twitter if you're there. Um, and my handle is at Cultivate Learn. And if you're on Facebook, you can also search for Cultivating the Learning. Um, and I see that I spelled learning wrong. Um, so uh, if you're already on there, sometimes it's nice just to receive things right to your inbox that are free. So um, if you're interested in that, feel free to check me out. All right. Um, also, in the top right hand corner of all the slides, I have posted the classroom code so that if you get kicked out, if something goes wrong, you'll be able to just rejoin using that code. And we're gonna be going through that together. I'm assuming that some of you have never joined a Google Classroom, so I will be going over those steps. If you already know how to, you can feel free to join, you know, whenever you're ready. Okay, some housekeeping. Um, it is super important that you are logged in using your Samson account because, um, our domains are set up to talk to one another. Uh, and so if you are in your personal Google account, your Gmail, uh, you might be getting um, like error messages or you might be denied entrance to certain things. So it's important that you're in your Samson account and um, all everything that we're doing, will um, you're gonna be turning things in in Google Classroom. So you don't have to worry about um, much else. And then as much as possible, if you would, um, keep your cameras on and your microphones off, except for during a question and answer session. Um, what we have found is that if people are asking questions through the entire thing, then um, it slows us down and we don't get to where we need to be. So if you do have a question, you can feel free to post it in the chat if you're afraid that you'll forget the question. Um, if it's an emergency, then for, for, for sure, unmute yourself um, and let us know, okay? In the last session, we also learned that um, people who could not get into Google Classroom, sometimes it helps if you go up to, um, first of all, you should be in Chrome. And um, it helps if you go to File, New Window, because then it kind of forgets the settings of the other window, all right? So that might help. So those are just some housekeeping things. What you are going to see is if you opened up Zoom in your um, browser, you're gonna see a Zoom tab. Otherwise you'll have a floating window. You're, you will eventually have the agenda open. I don't really use the agenda. I just created it because it makes some people feel better. Um, so once you get it, you can close it out. Um, we're gonna be using a tracker, which I started using um, when we started remote sessions because after one training without a tracker, I said, oh, this will not do. <laughs> so, so I use a tracker and we'll, so we'll be using that um, for multiple reasons. One is for accountability. Two is so that I can see how you're doing. And if anybody is in like emergency status, I can see that. Um, and so it also helps for you to feel like you're accomplishing something and to know what you know. And it helps me to celebrate you. So um, the tracker works, it's been working really well for all of our trainings. Um, so if you would like to use it with your students, 
feel free to go to file, make a copy, and then personalize it for, for, your, for your students and for yourself, okay? Um, okay. So we are going to be living through Google Classroom as a student first. The reason that we're doing this is twofold. One is because Google does not have a student view setting. So you cannot see what the students see, except for when you're a student in someone else's class. Um, the other um, reason is so that you can empathize with your students. Nothing is perfect, right? So there are certain things um, about Google Classroom that you might not love, but I do have to say kudos to um, Google because they have improved Google Classroom so much in the past three years. So um, here we go. So what I'd like you to do is, so you're gonna have multiple tabs open. Right now you should have your Zoom tab or your Zoom window. Um, and I need you to add a tab, please. And you have two ways that you can get to Google Classroom. You can either type in on a new tab, classroom.google.com, or you can go to the waffle in the top right-hand corner. Some people call it the nine square. Um, and then you can just locate the Google Classroom icon. Okay. Now, once you've gotten to Google Classroom, I need you please to put a Y in the chat box. Okay, when you get to Google Classroom, I'm gonna show you on the Zoom screen, I'm gonna back out. You should see a Google um, dashboard and you might have a gray um, image in the middle that says none. If you've never used Google Classroom, yours will be empty. If you're looking on your Zoom now, you can see that mine is pretty full. So you might see little tiles if you've already used Classroom, otherwise it'll just be blank. I haven't given you the class code yet. I just need you to get to Google Classroom. Once you get to Google Classroom, you're gonna to go to the plus sign in the top right-hand corner. And when you click on that, you have two choices, join class or create class. I need you to join the class, click on join class. And then when I move to the next slide, you're going to see the code. All right, so here is the code. And while you are logging in, I'm just gonna explain something. Um, next week when we are creating our own classroom and you are learning how to share it out to the kids, you can give them the code and they can type it in the way you all did just now. But they also, if you're looking at my screen where the red box is, they also have an invite link so sometimes it's easier if everybody is in the chat to just copy that link and put it in the chat. I didn't do that today because I wanted you to experience having to type the code in. Um, and for any of you who, for my specials people who might also be at the elementary level, for the littles, for sure, you're gonna give them that invite link. You're not gonna <laughs> expect them to type it in. And if you have some kids who have manual dexterity issues, you're gonna give them the link too. All right, so now that you are in the Google Classroom, let's just look at what's present, okay? So you are going to have um, at the top middle, a student only has three tabs, a teacher has four. So you should see stream, classwork, and people. So we're gonna talk about the stream first and we're gonna work in the stream, okay? So. The stream is the default view. Every time you open up a classroom, it defaults to stream. So what you should see first is, and I'm gonna click over, I'm gonna go into our classroom. All right, so in the stream, on the left-hand side, and this is the teacher view if you're looking at Zoom. So if you're just on your own um, classroom view, then you should be good to go. On the left, it has upcoming um, assignments. So anything that is going to be graded and needs to be turned in will show up right here on the left. If you click on view all, then it will take you 
so that you can see everything for just yourself. So if a student has everything finished, that'll be cleared out. And if a student is missing stuff, that's where they need to look, okay? And now I've got two items here for you to uh, complete. The first is what is my spirit animal? So um, the directions here are take the spirit animal quiz, comment below to share out your results, and then look for kindred spirits. So you can just tell us what your animal is, or you can tell us if you agree or you don't agree, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So go ahead and take it. And then where it says add class comment, that's where you're going to click and type in um, your results. All right. So you have two minutes. Go. All right, so we're looking for you to post your results in the class comments. All right, so inside the stream here, I, as a teacher, can turn off, respond or not so that kids can respond to one another. What we learned the hard way in coaching teachers in one-to-one -one, um, environments is that in the beginning, you wanna lock it down and then as you do digital citizenship and as you model for kids what would be an appropriate response to this, then you can start to unlock things one at a time. And we found that that cut down on nonsense um, and trouble. Now, if most everybody is good and they're doing well and there is a student who just decides that he's gonna be ornery, you can mute that student so that he can't respond. And you don't have to lock everybody down just because of one person. And then you can let that student earn back your trust. Okay. So we'll be going over the settings in the next, um, in the next session. All right. So again, remember, you're not using the chat for this. You want to, we want to see all of your answers inside Google Classroom attached to that announcement. So if you did put it in the um, chat, go ahead and redo it in the um, Google Classroom. Okay, now once you've done that, oh, and so first of all, you wanna see if there's anybody who has your like spirit, because wouldn't that be interesting if as a teacher, you got paired up with, with people who were similar to you, right? Um, and so as a teacher, looking at your students, you might wanna experiment and see how that goes too. So you could create them. Doing these personality tests is super powerful when it comes to learning um, um, profiles, learner profiles, right? Learner profiles are not just about how did they do on the pretest, they're better in math than English. Um, it's, uh, it's really about the whole, the whole child, okay? So feel free to use the stream for personality tests um, for your kids. The second thing I want you to do now is, and make sure you're muted, um, is I want you to click where it says the serious baby. And then I want you to rate the um, video. <clears throat> you can use words, you can use numbers, you can use emojis, but go ahead and watch it and, um, and, and let us know what you think. All right. So while people are watching and filling that out, I wanna explain about the stream. So um, in Google settings, if you don't change your settings, everything you post in classwork will automatically post in the stream. So I'm going to, we, we're not gonna go over that um, this week unless we have time, um, but next week I'm gonna show you how to turn it off. What we have found is that the stream works best when you use it for community building and relationship building and humor and to lighten up the situation because pandemics are awful, right? And so what we found is that when we think about why do we have warmups? We have warmups because middle schoolers are so crazy in the hallway, right? And we need them to settle down. Stop socializing, your, your friends are gone, come on in, it's time to work. But now it's the reverse, right? They're at home, there's no energy, there's no reason for them to log in because they are not interested. So the stream is a way for us. Oh, and another reason they don't log in is because they don't feel connected. So another way to log in, I mean, to use the stream is to post funny videos, is to post jokes, is to have uh, theme days, 
post student um, uh, baby pictures and have them guess who it is. There are so many ways you can use the stream to have fun, right? Because I don't know about you, I'm watching my own children and they're not laughing ever in class. But in a real class, they laugh all the time, right? Because their teachers are entertaining. So we need to find a way to do that. So the stream is a really nice way um, to build relationships, okay? All right, I'm gonna jump back over to the um, slide deck. And now we're gonna move into the classroom, the classwork tab, okay? So when you click on the classwork tab, if you're looking at the Zoom, um, I will, um, um, I'll just talk you through it. Otherwise you can be inside your Google Classroom um, live. So at the top, you see above where it says session one, you'll see view your work. If you click on that now, it should be empty. So feel free to go ahead and click on it. If it's not empty, it has stuff that was already added to the classroom. And so it's waiting for you. So if a student can't find what he's supposed to be working on, you can tell him, go into the classwork tab, click on view your work and see if it's there. Because the kids might say, my drive is a mess. I can't find anything, right? And we all get that. So view your work might be helpful. And that's pretty new. To the right of that, it says Google Calendar. If you click on the Google Calendar, anything in this classroom that I have set a date for will automatically show up on your calendar. So when you click on that, a new tab will open up. And if you look at April 29th and 30th, you'll see that there are two green links there. It's green because our classroom theme is green. So everything is color coded for them. All right. If to the right of Google Calendar, if you close out that tab and you come back into your um, Google Classroom tab, to the right where it says Google Calendar, it says Class Drive Folder. When they click on that, they'll, you'll see everything that you've done for this class inside that folder. So the Drive Folder has everything you've ever done and the View Your Work, I believe, is stuff that is pending, all right? So underneath session one, now, let me just see. Let me go back. Underneath session one, we've got a materials tab. Okay. I need you to click where it says materials. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go into my classroom classwork. And when I click on it, okay. So you should see three, you might have to see um, view announcement or view material. When you click on that, you'll see three links. The one is a purple form, the second is the agenda, and the third is the tracker. Would you please click all three of them right now so I can see from this group so far that you tend to dig in and just try to figure things out, which I commend you for. The one thing I want to caution you on, though, is that sometimes Sometimes we are too hardworking and we will continue trying, trying, trying instead of asking, you know, for help or going onto YouTube to find um, a, you know, a, a quick tutorial that would show us in two minutes what it took us, you know, we already spent 30 minutes trying to figure out. So those are just some, some um, tips right there. Go to YouTube first. I'm just going to be honest. I learn from YouTube. Sometimes before a training, I will, you know, make sure that I haven't missed anything new and I go into YouTube and see what's new and invariably I learn something. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, move over to the tracker. Um, once you've completed the form, you can close out that tab. You don't need it anymore. The agenda, I'm just going to be honest. I don't work from the agenda because we have a Google Classroom and we have a um, slide deck. Um, so the agenda is just there for people that it makes them feel um, better if they're anxious. <laughs> so you can close out the agenda too. You don't need that tab to be open as well. 
So now you should have, you'll have a tracker tab, you'll have your um, Google Classroom classwork, um, and then you'll have your, um, oh, that should be it for now. Okay. So if you would click on the tracker tab, and what I'd like you to do is, I want you to claim a row, put your email and your um, name in the first two columns, and then go ahead and grade yourself, but only if it's a three or a four. Please don't post any ones or twos because it messes up my system, <laughs> okay? So, and you only have to do like up to, you don't have to go far, right? You don't have to do all of them because we're gonna be checking back in and you're gonna have time to rate yourself. So for right now, your task is to access the, um, access the tracker. I need you to put your entire email in there, not just the prefix, because I'm just gonna do a copy paste um, to invite you to be a teacher in next week's session. So I need your whole email, please and thank you. <laughs> If you see that there's a colored circle around a square, that means somebody else already claimed that row. So you wanna pick a different one. And if you choose some farther down, I will just sort them. And then that way um, we'll be back out al alphabetical. So it's okay if you pick the ones way far down at the bottom, um, but you will end up alphabetical just so you know. <clears throat> What you have to do is click on the triangle inside each box and select from the drop down menu. So this is pre programmed for a one, two, three, and a four, and you have to select the answer. So it will automatically paste that entire um, um, selection in the box. So it helps me to see, I should only be seeing threes and fours right now right? If you type the number three, it won't work. You have to click on the drop down arrow to see your selections. Okay. So if you don't see an emoji in your box, then that means you missed the drop down arrow. So go back and fix it. And if you didn't put your email in the first column, I'll need you to go back and do that as well. Or and or your name in the second column. So this, this is like my group of overachievers, clearly. <laughs> you guys are fantastic. Okay, so for column C, it says I can open the tracker, claim a row and choose an answer. Everybody should have uh, a three or a four in column C. Wonderful. Okay, so now you've all used the chat feature in Zoom so for column D, you should be able to give yourselves a three or a four for that too. So go ahead and grade yourself for D. And the pre-assessment was the form. So you should be able to grade yourself for column E as well. You joined our Google Classroom, so you can grade yourself for column F. And we did G. You, um, you were supposed to respond in the stream. So go ahead and grade yourself for that. And then we're going to move on to multiple choice questions. You can drag the, uh, the scroll bar at the bottom left and right so that um, columns A and B are frozen. And so when you scroll back and forth, you can still see which row belongs to you. So just go ahead and scroll. <clears throat> uh, for remote learning, I know that this is self-assessment. And of course, you're sometimes going to have kids who are faking it. But for the most part, kids are honest, you know, and they want to feel that accomplishment. Um, and so, and it all comes out in the end, you know, if they were faking it anyway. So um, you would have a different spreadsheet that is your spreadsheet that shows mastery. If you use something like this, if you're doing mastery-based learning and competency-based learning, um, the power behind this is you, it's like when you're a little kid and you feel like you've accomplished something when you turn the page of a book, when you fill these in, you feel like you are making progress. So those kids that are low, 
they, this helps to boost their confidence because they know that they know something. The kids that are, um, that, uh, that are at the top can fly through this and can let you know they are ready for something else. So you can, at that point, give them, you know, something else to do, something that is fun, something that helps them grow, right? Um, okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the classwork tab. So go back to your classroom. We're going to move on from the materials. Oh, and I want to share about materials. So materials are different than assignments. What I have seen is that too many teachers make everything an assignment. You only want to do that if you are, if you need to collect something back from kids um, and or you need to assess it. The reason being, um, every time you create an assignment, Google creates a folder for that assignment inside your classroom folder. Google creates all these folders for you, thank God, right? Um, and so you don't want to have 120 folders because you posted different materials for 120 days. The other, um, so you want to choose material when the time comes and we'll be going over that next week. Now, also about materials, there are some shortcuts that I want to share with you. Some teachers will post materials once per unit or once per month or once per however you organize your um, classwork tab. And then they just keep editing it and adding stuff to it. So you could do it that way so that kids always know there's only one materials. I'm going to go in there and find what I need. The other thing that teachers do is they create a materials folder and then they just share the folder out on this screen so that every time they add something to that folder, the kids are automatically given access to it because you shared that folder with this group of kids. So if you are differentiating and we'll be going over differentiating next um, or in one of the future sessions, um, you can create different folders for different groups of kids and they don't know that the other kids have different stuff. So that is something that is super powerful here as well, okay? So materials that would normally be photocopies that you hand out um, that they're not handing back in, you're gonna post that as materials, okay? Um, and if it's not being graded, you can also post collaborative files, but you have to change the settings so that the kids can all edit. Try not to post materials in the stream. You can, but that doesn't mean that it's a good idea. So we're going to move on to just below. We're still in the classwork tab, just below materials now. I need you please to click where it says multiple choice question. And there is a question there, which is a super simple question, right? In which state is Durham? Go ahead and answer it. Now, as you can see from this screen, this, this is graded, but it doesn't have to be you can turn off the grading and make it not be graded. Um, you also, I'm gonna show you, um, this does not grade itself. If you want something that is self-graded, you wanna use Google Forms because inside Google Forms, you can do that. This multiple choice question um, is super powerful for just checking for understanding, right? Um, it's powerful for social emotional stuff. How are you feeling today? What's the mood? <clears throat> Give them options. You can use emojis. You, you know, there are all different things you could do. Um, so quick assessments where you're not giving points, you're just checking the room. Multiple choice questions are going to be helpful for that. So if you look over at the, um, at the Zoom, I'm going to show you what I see. So I can see that I have 43 responses and that's including last the last session. So over here on the left where it says turned in and I'm in the Zoom, make sure you're looking at the Zoom now because this is the teacher side. I can see who all answered it and then farther down where it says assigned, I can see who didn't answer it 
right? So if a person steps away from their computer or if they had to run to the bathroom or if their sister dragged their laptop off the table, you know, there might be an emergency. So you could check in with these people or you could just be patient and wait and see how if they show up right later on. Okay. So as a teacher, you can very quickly see, okay, everybody knows that Durham is in North Carolina. Let's move on. All right. So that is a multiple choice question. One thing I forgot to mention, the multiple choice question only allows you to ask one question. So really think of it as polling. If you want to ask three questions, you'd have to create three separate questions. What we're going to do now is, and this is a little trick about classroom. You can back arrow out of this, but the fastest way to get back to where you want is to click um, in the left hand corner where the title of the classroom is. When you click on that, it'll take you back to the stream and then you click on classwork to get back to the classwork because hitting back arrow, back arrow, back arrow is sometimes just a nightmare, okay? So now what I want you to do is we're gonna do a short answer question. So click in the classwork tab where it says short answer question under session one. And you might have to hit view question. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna jump back over to my um, slideshow because I want to, I want you to see it. Um, I wanna display it as you see it. So <clears throat> sometimes students get confused and instead of typing their answer inside the answer box, they will click where it says add a comment. And there are class comments for everybody to see. There are also private comments that go only to the teacher, so it's private. But for them, for you to be able to see their answer and for them to be able to see other people's answers, they have to type it in the your answer box, okay? Now, if you would, if you're not looking at the Zoom, go ahead and switch over to the Zoom because I want to show you something. This is like a Google trick. Students, the best thing about Google discussion questions or short answer questions is that students cannot see anybody else's answer until after they have submitted their answer. And you have the power to set it that they can edit their answer or they cannot edit their answer. So they can't wait for Suzy Q who's got all the A's, right, to post her answer, and then they just reword what she said. They can't do that, it's not possible, okay? So when they submit and when you submit, what you're gonna see is a, um, this C classmate answers will appear after you hit turn in. And also, this is brand new, at the top of your screen now, you have two more answer, two more tabs, and it'll say your answer and classmate answers. So after you respond to this question, which is name three to five opportunities for you to use the multiple choice slash polling question in your class, notice I wrote, please answer in complete sentences and be sure to name your content area. As a literacy person, right? <laughs> We all have to help our kids read and write better. So it's important for us always to put that in there. Please answer in complete sentences. Make that a part of any rubric and any expectation you have because it should become habit, right? So let's support one another. It doesn't matter if you're PE or music or science or math, please answer in complete sentences, all right? So I'm gonna switch back over to the classroom so that we can see how the answers are coming in <clears throat> and they are time stamped so we can see when somebody submitted. So go ahead and answer the question and then I'm going to show you a strategy for increasing discussions and learning with discussion questions. It becomes more authentic if the students respond to one another. So what I'm going to ask you to do is when somebody has been replied to, you can see that it says one reply, two replies. I'd like you to read through a few of them 
and reply to two. But once somebody else has already got two replies, you can't reply to them. You have to pick somebody else. So what that does is it makes sure that everybody gets responded to because how terrible does it feel when you've gone through the work of answering this question and nobody responded to you? It's like making you feel invisible, right? So this is a way of saying, I see you so that you, everybody is getting responses, okay? So your responses should also be in complete sentences. And I'm gonna, as you are responding to one another, I want to, um, I want to give you a little insider trading information. So just like with the stream, you can turn on and off responding. The same way here, you don't want to turn responding on right out of the gate. You want to model for the kids. Here's a response. How, how should we respond to this? What would be appropriate? And there are, <clears throat> um, you can Google sentence starters and it could be sentence starters math, sentence starter discussion questions, discussion questions, sentence starters. Sometimes they call them sentence stems. It's all, all the work's been done for you. They've already created beautiful posters that you can copy and paste and print out and put on your wall. It is super important for you to teach your kids how to use the sentence stems and then expect them to use the sentence stems. And it does two things. One is it gives them skills that we were never taught, right? That are a part of that whole portrait of a graduate because kids need to learn how to communicate with one another, both orally and in writing. And our kids have been raised on social media. That is the most inappropriate nonsense we've ever seen. So we have to really teach them how to do this. Assume they don't know and assume that they have the worst um, examples, right, in their past. So model for them, use the sentence stems. You would type the answer out as the teacher or have a student sit at your desk and do it. Um, but um, then as you start to feel like, okay, are we ready to do this? All right, let's all, I'm gonna unlock it and then go ahead and try it, okay? So I'm looking, so remember, if there are already two replies, you want to make sure that you choose somebody else. And if there's somebody that doesn't have a reply, we want to be inclusive. So those of you who are done early, go back and you can put in another one. It doesn't have to be just two because we don't want anybody to be not noticed, right? So let's make sure that everybody has two replies. In the next two weeks, what I'm going to be asking you to do is focus on the stream to build relationships and build community. So it's important that we have this. And if you can't think of ways, you can come back into this classroom and pull some ideas from your classmates. So now let's jump back to our tracker. And let's see, you should be able to grade yourself on columns H and I and J. So this is like a pause, right? where you're checking yourself and I'm checking up on you. My, um, so I think everybody in my family is ADD, but my fourth is like really bad, needs medication. Um, this type of accountability tracker would be so helpful for him. And you might find the same for your students. And it's not malicious that they are daydreaming. It's not malicious. So we have to kind of build in, I don't know, it's not a crutch, but it's a, I don't know what I'd call it, but it's helpful. So anything that helps, right? So go ahead and grade yourself on up to J. And I don't know about you, but I did it and I'm proud, just makes me feel so good. So for those kids who are you know, they don't have a lot of self-esteem. This could be an esteem builder for them as well. And if they need help, if they mark that and then they get help, they get to change it to, I did it and I'm proud. So if you are lost, it's important that you grade yourself now at a one or a two. If you're having trouble, if you're falling behind, 
Now it's important for you to let me know that in the beginning, I didn't want ones and twos for anything we hadn't covered yet. Okay. Um, when you scroll up, you can, when you scroll down, I mean, you can still see which column is which question. And if you, you guys seem to be pretty techy. So if you don't know how to do that, um, if you go up to the view menu and you choose freeze, then you can choose columns and rows, how, however many you want to freeze. So you can scroll up and down and left and right um, and still be able to see everybody. All right, let's head back into classroom. And now what we're going to talk about is assignments. So if you look on um, the Zoom tab or the Zoom window, what's really hard about assignments as a teacher is you cannot see what it looks like as a student unless you're a student in someone else's class. So because I have my own Google domain, I was able to create fake students so that we could, so that I could get this screenshot for you. So at 12 o'clock, I scheduled for my slideshow to become available to you um, in the um, classwork area. So you will be able to copy and paste this slide. You can copy, um, make a copy file, make a copy of my entire slide deck if you want um, to use with your students. But this is a screenshot that is important because kids for some reason they don't want to put stuff where it belongs. They always want to put things in the comments. And so it's important for you to be able to show them what to do. So there are two ways that you can use an assignment. One is what we're all familiar with. Uh, I'm passing something out to you. I need you to edit it and turn it back in. That's the second type of assignment that I'm going to show you. The first type here is the one that most people never use, but it is powerful. So let me explain how this works. Over here on the right, if the students click the add or create button, and why would they do this? Let's just say that you are doing an open-ended assignment where you say to the kids, you just have to prove to me that you understand photosynthesis. You can choose any file type you want, you just have to do it. Well, at that point, they would choose add or create because maybe it is a video that they created, or maybe they created a slideshow, or maybe it's linked on some other website. So when you click add or create, you've got these choices. And again, I'm in the Zoom. You want to be watching the Zoom, or you could click the add create if you're in your own classroom. The top three are if they created it and you forgot to have them start within your assignment and they need to pull it from their drive or from somewhere else. They would either click Google Drive, link, or file. The second grouping is if you say, I want you to create it and it's going to be, you can choose doc slides or drawings, or maybe it, I need you to create a doc for your essay. So click here and click on the doc right now. The benefit to doing it this way is when a student clicks on that create new doc, it automatically puts their name at the beginning of the file name, and then it puts your title name after a hyphen. So for me, it would be, or for like Winnie the Pooh, it would be Winnie the Pooh hyphen original work. So every kid's, and when they do it this way, you're automatically linked to that work immediately when they use the create new inside an assignment. So that means that everybody creates it um, and it's due on Friday, you can immediately see where they are in their progress. So you can check in on them, you can give formative feedback, you know, you can say, hey, John, it's due on Friday, it's Wednesday, are you okay? Do you need help? Do you need to come in? So it gives you an opportunity to check in on kids. So that works both remotely and in the classroom because you know, a lot of times we can't, we check in on them outside of class, right? So what I'd like you to do now is um, inside the classwork page of classroom, I want you to click on original work. I want you to click on add um, or create. And I want you to choose either add something from your Google Drive or click on one of those create new and then hit turn in. You don't have to type anything in the final file um, just go ahead and hit turn in. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like 
from a teacher point of view. So once you've turned it in, switch back over to your Zoom view. And I'm going to show you what you can see as a teacher. What did you want us to do? My audio cut out. OK, so inside the original work, you're going to um, click where it says add or create. And then you're going to either hit Google Drive and link something from your drive or click one of the create news um, that are in color and then hit the turn in button. And once you've turned it in, switch over to Zoom because I want to show you what I see. So immediately, I as the teacher can see who turned it in or who at least clicked the create and who didn't. So right here, not to call out Amy, but I know that Amy is in my class, but she hasn't gotten to this yet. Okay, there's no attachment. Notice these blank sheets, John here, he's got a blank sheet. So that means he hit the create button. Whereas Janet here that has this theme, uh, looks like a slideshow, she actually attached a file. Now, the create button is super powerful because when the kids hit create, you are automatically connected to them. You don't have to wait for them to turn it in to be able to check in on them. <clears throat> the ad, I believe they have to turn it in for you to be able to see anything, okay? So ad is only for if they started it and you forgot to create the assignment, then they have to add it. But if you're thinking ahead of time, you can have them create it inside the assignment and then you have, um, you've got a direct shot to the file 100% of the time. Now with these assignments, somebody asked a question about turning it in. When, you, when a student turns in a file, they only have viewing rights, okay? So the teacher has possession of the file, just like if they hand it in an essay to you, they don't get it back until you hand it back to them. There is a caveat though, with, um, with assignments, if a teacher, if a student turns it in, um, like when I, I was English, <clears throat> so I would teach my students, listen, you lose 10 points if you turn it in late. If you open up your thing and you're reading through it and you find more than 10 points of mistakes, then unsubmit it because you'll have an unsubmit button, fix it and resubmit it because then it's in your favor, right? It's either lose 10 points or lose 25 points. I'd rather lose 10 points for being late. So a student can unsubmit and resubmit. When that happens, it is time stamped. So the latest time stamp is what shows. So a student can't, like with essays, we used to say, I used to say, turn it in by midnight on whatever the night is. And you know, most students would want to turn it in and then keep working on it, but they can't. Okay. So just so you understand that. And over here on the left, if you're still looking in the Zoom screen, I can see at the top, it shows me everyone who logged it in. And then under assigned, I can very quickly see who has not hit the turn in button. So sometimes a student will work on it and then forget to turn it in. You can still grade it, right? Um, and, and, you know, if it was finished, um, I don't think the point, well, I'm not going to get into that. But anyway, <laughs> so there is some control. You get to see it. everything is time stamped. Now, I haven't looked at this in a while, and I'll look at it before our next um, session. Originally, when a student unsubmitted and resubmitted, I had both copies. So I could see the changes that they made, okay? 
questions, please. Um, um, do you have any questions about using an assignment where you're not passing anything out, the students are just passing something in? Okay, Jeff. Jeff, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like it turned in. No, it didn't. And um, did you you hit turn in or did you hit on submit? And you can unmute yourself right now if you if you want. <clears throat> I created a document. Uh, okay. Google so Docs. I actually, it was actually a drawing. Okay. The only thing I saw in there to submit was a share button. Um, oh, so you have to go back to your uh, the Google Classroom assignment and you have to turn it in there. Okay. And that's a really good point. In Docs, the turn in link shows up inside the doc as well because students had that exact problem. So that's something that you have to teach them is that you actually turn it in inside the classroom. And if you, if you liken it to, you would have to walk into my class and hand me your stuff. So walk into the classroom, the digital classroom and turn in your stuff, right? There's no attachment for me. Can we not send audio files? For an audio file, that's a great question. So um, for an audio file, if it is, if it's like a Vocaroo file, um, you would be you would be able to add the link to it, and then uh, and then I'd have to click the link. I've not done audio um, in one of these, but that's a really good really good question. So I'll tell you what I will find that answer. Um, I will find that answer about the audio files. Okay. I think I just turned it in. Can you see it now? Okay, let's see. Yes, you popped up to the top part. So it's in now. Yep, you're good. And Very then good. Thank you. H. So H looks like HHS band. I'm not seeing yours. Um, no, he was the one that was asking can the can, about the audio files. Audio, right. But he's not showing up even, he's not showing up in either of the lists on the left. Um, look at Jeffrey Tart right there. Oh, yep. oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. I see. Okay, then. Then let me look over here. It says no files attached but you did attach an audio file. You know what, Jeffrey, let's, um, if you're willing to stay after at 12, um, um, we could maybe work that out, the two of us. Okay, good, all right. Um, so the rest of us, let's move on. Okay, now this is the big whopper. Giving each student a copy, and you're not, we're not gonna go over how to do this, we just want you to know how it works, okay? And you're gonna experience it as a student. So what I need you to do is inside Google, uh, inside the classwork tab, you're gonna go down to where it says copy for each. When you click on that, it might say view assignment. You might have to click to make it expand. I need you to click on each of the three items. One is a PDF that is supposed to be view only. One is a collaborative file that I marked as everybody can edit. And the third is make a copy for each student so that each of you has a separate quiz paper. All right. So go to your, um, I'm going to have to, I'm going to, um, instead of backing out of the original work, I'm going to click on the name of the class and go to classwork. It's just the fastest way to get there. Copy for each, view assignment. So you're going to click on each of those three so that they open up. When you hit the collaborative file, it will pop open an extra tab. And when you click on the quiz file, it will open up an extra tab. So the PDF just kind of 
pops open as a view only, right? You can't do anything to it. You can choose open up in the middle um, of the screen and open it up in Kami or um, open it up in a Google Doc. Um, and that changes everything. So that's a whole different lesson. But what I want you to do is click on the collaborative file and go ahead and type your name in any box that you don't see a flag in. If there's already a flag there or a cursor, pick a different box. And middle schoolers love to type inappropriate things because they think you can't see who did it. So you need to let them know that you see their name on a flag as they type, but also if you switch over to the Zoom screen, I'm gonna show you how you can check up on them. So up here in my file, it says see new changes. And when I click on that, I see the full version history. And if Jeff Bradshaw didn't type Jeff Bradshaw, I would know when I hover over his name. So if somebody thinks that they are Spicoli from Fast Times at Ridgemount High, and they're going to write the names off the substitute list, you know exactly who did it. Okay, so you might want to just let them know that in advance to cut them off at the pass. Okay, the collaborative file is in um, the classwork tab, and I'll show you again in the Zoom. You're going to click on the assignment that says copy for each, and then there are three files there. One says collaborative file, so you're going to click on that. Yes, sorry. Thank you, um, Jeff. You might have to click view assignment for it to pop down so that you can see the attachments. All right, so the collaborative file. Collaboration is super, super, super important. Um, try not to shy away from it. Do more um, digital citizenship um, and empathy lessons, right? And appropriateness lessons and professionalism lessons. Um, instead of stopping the collaboration. You can also, you will have the opportunity to um, create small groups. And so like if group A needs to have one collaborative file just for themselves, you can create that and share it out just to them. So um, in the next session, we're gonna be going over how to differentiate and that's gonna be important. So for the quiz file, when you click on the quiz file, I want you to look up at the tab at the top and it should have your name at the beginning and then followed by this ridiculously long title that's on this doc, right? So that's another reason why when you create a quiz or anything the kids are gonna get a copy of, you wanna check the title to make sure because this is what the, this is what the folder will be called that Google Classroom automatically creates for you. All right, and we'll be getting into that next session as well. Um, when it is make a copy for each student, this, each, each student gets his own copy. It does not affect your master and they are not connected to one another. Can they cheat? They can always cheat. They can always find, way, find ways to cheat, right? Um, so just make sure your questions are not Googleable and they actually have to show you some work. If you clicked on view assignment, the quiz will be then underlying work. Yes, great point. So um, let me see, where was that? Let me go into my thing. Okay, um, I'm back in the Google slideshow on the Zoom um, window. So once you have done some work, if at the top of your classwork, the view your work should show everything that you've opened up inside the um, screen. Now view your work tends to show assignments, not everything that you've clicked on. Um, and it usually only shows what's coming, like what's coming to you. If you wanna see everything, you would click on the class drive folder. So definitely go up and click on those links at the top of your classwork tab so that you can see what your students will see because you don't see the same things in your teacher view. And we're almost to an end. So we have to do one more thing. We all need to create our own Google Classroom 
so that you have a place to practice over the next two weeks, okay? So what I want you to do is please, um, you can either listen and follow the directions or you can switch over to your Zoom um, and watch and then do it. We need to get out of this classroom. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna click on the three lines, which is the main menu over in the top left-hand corner. When you click on that, you will see classes at the very top. I wish they would call that dashboard because it brings you back to your dashboard. So click where the house is and it says classes. So the three lines first, then the menu pops out, then choose classes. It takes you back to your dashboard and you should all see our welcome to Google. Um, and these, you can drag and drop these um, to put the ones you want at the top. I need you to go to the plus sign in the top right hand corner. And when you click on that, it says join or create. You're going to choose create. Now, what I'd like you to do here is, I want you to call the class name, delete me, okay? And the reason you wanna do that is so that it's very clear that this is your practice class. And then when you hit create one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it's taken a while, nine, 10, it takes about 10 seconds for it to create the class, okay? So once you've created the delete me, um, the brand new Google Classroom called delete me, would you please put a Y in the Zoom chat box? So you now have your own Google Classroom. What I want you to focus on for the next two weeks, if you, if you have classrooms that you're using with students, then you would do this inside your existing classrooms, right? I want you to focus on using the stream just for building relationships. So I'd like you to post a minimum of two, but you can do as many as you want, a minimum of two um, posts in the stream that build relationships. So jokes, uh, baby pictures uh, of kids, let them guess who it is, um, um, the personality tests, funny YouTube videos, TikTok videos, anything that's funny, it draws the kids in, okay? And it, you know, it gets them there, laugh together. It's always good to release with some laughter, right? So that is your assignment. It is not that much because I just want you to focus on relationship building in the stream, okay? So two is the minimum. You can do as many as you want. If you're not using a classroom with any of your students, I want you to get creative and use your delete me stream to start posting ideas. All right, you guys well, are wonderful. Thank you. And I'd then like my to thank music you. teachers, if you want to stay, um, and anyone else, we'll figure out the that audio thing. I'd like to thank you for your time this morning. Sure. Considered to be an excellent PD and one that's very useful. And uh, I'm also proud of our teachers for our engagement this morning. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good crew.